Everybody has a way. Okay, so on number 14, we have Teak 5A, and we're going to talk about a hot air balloon is released at ground level. So we have one coordinate point at zero, zero. And it rises into the air at a constant rate. After five seconds, the height of the balloon is 20 feet. So we have our other point at 520. And um, the balloon continues to rise at the same rate, which table shows the relationship between time and seconds, x, and the height of the ball and feet. So that means that I'm going to need to find my slope to write my equation. So that's going to be 20 minus 0 over 5 minus 0, which is going to give me 20 divided by 5, which is going to be 4. So my equation is going to be y is equal to 4x. So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to find out which table matches. All right, so I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to plug in my equation, 4x, um, and I'm going to go to my table. And I'm going to look at my table. All right, I got 40, 80, 120. I've got 40, 80, no, I got that, that doesn't even, not even close. Uh, same with G. G is definitely not a close. So I got 40, 80, nope, oh, it stops right there. So our answer choice is J. All right? It's really that easy, pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, number 15. Which Venn diagram correctly represents the relationship between rational and irrational answers? Um, so, uh, ir irrational and not answers, irrational, rational numbers and irrational numbers. Okay, we're going to pick the right answer. All right, so um, if I look at my answer choice and let's talk about these, it says our first one says we have the real number system and then inside the real number system we have rational numbers and irrational numbers and neither one of them overlap. So I can't say that there are any irrational numbers that are rational, and I can't say that there are any irrational numbers in the rational number system, but they are both real numbers. This is true. They have no numbers in common. Um, B, it says because irrational numbers are also rational, that is false. Uh, irrational numbers and rational numbers, all rational numbers are irrational. No, that again is false. All of these are false, so my only answer choice is A. Uh, let's see. I'll do, okay, let's see. I'll do number 16 in the next video. Okay, so in this video, it's really easy, too. All these questions are so easy. All right. So, Rodolfo has 15 toys in his box, and he adds two new toys every month. So, uh, based on this information, which graph represents the shows the best relationship between the number of toys that Rodolfo has in his box, Y, and the number of months that have passed X. So um, our equation would be Y is equal to 15 plus 2X. Well, remember, this is our B value. That's our Y intercept. Because he starts out the month, our, X, our input is zero. So he starts out with 15. Well, that eliminates H. Because that doesn't have that in it. That eliminates F as well. And then that eliminates J. So our only possible answer choice is G, but let's check. So I have this point here. Um, oops. I have this point here, and that is uh, 0, 15. All right. Then I have this other point there, which is going to give me, uh, that's going to be 5, uh, 25. All right, 25 minus 15 over 5 minus 0. 25 minus 15 will give me 10. 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. So that does give my slope that I'm looking for because that's what we're looking at here is our slope. That does give me the slope that I have written up there for my equation and the y-intercept. So it has to be g. Number 17, uh, we have a dilation. Which rule represents the dilation that's been given on the triangle? So that's going to eliminate A. A and B both are um, translations. Uh, so C and D have the dilation. So remember, to get my scale factor, scale factor is going to be equal to um, the J prime over J. So now J prime, let's see, I'm going to look at that coordinate point. And J prime, and that's a bad one to use. Let me find one that's a nice even point. Ah, L. 
both L, both of the L. So L prime over L. So L prime is at the coordinate point 14, negative 7. And L is at 8, negative 4. So I'm going to take 14 divided by 8, and that will give me my answer choice, D. Okay, number 18, um, 4 point, uh, TEAK 4C. Uh, gym membership uh, has a fee plus an initial fee per yoga class. Um, so that's y, that's a, y is equal to mx plus b. That's our initial fee. And then the m is our fee per class. So really we need to find our slope and our uh, y-intercept. Um, so the table shows the linear relationship between the number of yoga classes and the total cost, including the membership fee. So our slope is going to be equal to, there's a couple ways that we can handle this. Um, we can just take 75 minus 67.50, divide that by 8 minus 6, which will give us 3.75. Okay, so additional fee per yoga class, that's true. Uh, G is false. So now let's go through and look at what our membership fee is. So that's going to be Y is equal to 3.75X plus B. We don't know what B is. So I'm going to pick one of the other points. I can pick truly any point that I want to. So and I'm going to plug that in. So I'm going to pick, I can pick 75. So 75 is equal to 37.5 times 8. And I'm going to pick I'm going to pick 10 because that's going to make that 37 a nice nice number. So that's going to be 82.50 is equal to 3.75 times 10 plus B. Um, this is going to become 82.50 is equal to 37.50 plus B. I'm going to subtract 37 from both sides and that will give me $45 is equal to B. So my initial, the initial fee for the membership is $45, which is neither one of these. So our answer choice is F. Number 19. Okay, this is going to take a little bit, um, but it's really not going to take that long. Um, the list shows the height of the students in inches. And we want to find the mean absolute, the MAD, the mean absolute deviation for these numbers. So first off, I need to do is find my mean. So to, in order to find the mean, I'm going to add all those numbers up together. So I'm going to say 63 plus 70 plus 68 plus 73 plus 58 plus 67. And divide that by one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. So 63 plus 70 plus 68 plus 73 plus 58 plus 67. And divide that by six. And that will give me my mean is equal to 66.5. Let me make sure I got that one right. 63 plus 70 plus 68 plus 73 plus 58 plus 67. Divide that by 6. Yes, I got that right. Now I'm, I'm going to write this down. So my numbers, I have my numbers and then my mean. My mean, all right, I have... My mean is 66.5, and I have 63. And I want to find out how, what's the distance from 63 to 66.5. I have 70. I have 68. I have 73. 58. And 67. Okay. So 66.5 minus 63 will give me, I'm going to do a different color pen. 3.5 and 70 minus 66.5 will give me 3 point wait 63 minus 66.5 will give me 3.5 70 minus 66.5 gives me 3.5 68 minus 66.5 whoops
1.5. 3 minus 66.5 will give me 6.5. 58 minus 66.5 gives me 8.5. 67 minus 66.5 gives me 0.5. Jiminy, that's a lot. That's a lot of differences. All right, now I'm going to add all those up. So 3.5 plus 3.5 plus 1.5 plus 6.5 plus 8.5 plus 5.5 all over 6. So I add up all those numbers. So 3.5 plus 1 1.5, 6.5, 8.5, whoops, 8.5 plus 0.5 gives me 24. So the sum is equal to 24, which is that answer right there, but we need to divide that by 6 to get our mean absolute deviation. So divide that by 6, and that will give me 4. So my mean, my mean, my absolute difference, because we said if I were to draw the number line like in the video and talk about marking each of these on the distance, my mean in, in the number, my mean is going to be here, 66.5. And then each of these values are going to be that four, at least approximately four units, the average way for each point on this, uh, each number is going to be four distance of four away from that where the mean is at. And that's what the mean absolute deviation means. So my answer choice is C. Um, I'm going to go over number 20 in the next video because I don't want this video to do long.